hello everyone welcome to this special edition of peak cloud is webinar uh, my name is akash i'm excited to be your host today as as we embark on a journey to explore this exclusive sneak peek at our newly launched peak cloudy uh, unified platform yeah you heard it right so we are here to showcase you the latest advancements in our platform freshly launched and dreaming with innovative features so before we delve into this exciting content a quick reminder about housekeeping so your lines are currently muted but we encourage you to submit your questions using this Q&A option at the bottom and we'll address them during the dedicated Q&A section at the end so let's take a brief look at today's agenda next slide yeah so we would start with the helping you understand this limitation and challenges of traditional testing solutions uh, that is in your day to day job and then we would move towards this newly launched peak cloud unified platform and it's like entire walk through all the new features use cases and capabilities followed by the benefits of going unified and then would then we would initiate our Q&A section so we would try to keep this webinar as engaging as possible so i encourage you to please uh, engage as much as possible so this webinar is recorded and we'll share the link afterwards for you to revisit or share with your colleagues so now with further ado uh, let me introduce our speaker for today uh, shoaib ahmed so shoaib is our pre-sales manager at pcloudy here and he brings over 11 years of experience in the it industry and he has been instrumental in helping mnc's uh, overcome their app testing automation challenges uh, his expertise lies with technologies like devops automation performance functional testing uh, mobile app testing etc so let's dive with the help uh, dive with the wealth of knowledge shoaib ahmed has to offer uh, over to you shoaib thank you so much akash for the introduction and running through the agenda so hello everyone thank you so much uh, for your time as well and uh, today i'll be taking you through the uh, the new unified uh, platform uh, and uh, yeah as akash mentions if there are any questions around please feel free to write your questions in the uh, chat box we will take your questions at the end all right so with that uh, let me uh, get to the next slide all right i just overview about our organization uh, so we were uh, founded in 2000, one second, uh, 2017, our Bay Area headquartered company is Bay Area. And uh, we are a Series A funded company with over 100 plus employees globally. Mm -hmm. And uh, we also have more than 300K plus registered use, uh, registered on our platform who are uh, doing their uh, functional testing on the platform for both manual and as well as automation. And uh, on, on, the, on the customer side, we have more than 500 plus customers globally. These are our, some of our uh, customers across various different domain, uh, be it on the uh, banking side or even on the financials, uh, insurance, uh, gaming, so you name it. So we have across all the various different uh, domain. And uh, these are some of our, um, you know, G2 from the G2 high performer ratings that we have received for the year 2020, 24. So with that, uh, let me also talk about uh, some light around the uh, security norms and the compliances that we adhere to. So before that, uh, on the when we talk about the uh, data centers, so we are uh, uh, we are we, our data centers are hosted across different locations in India, uh, as well as in Singapore, uh, Philippines, US, uh, and uh, we are also uh, moving towards uh, Gulf and also the European region. So that's something which is on our roadmap. And when we talk about the security, uh, we are uh, SOC 2 and ISO 27000 compliant and also GXP compliance. And uh, we are also among the GDPR as well as HICAP compliance. So we adhere to all the industry standards. So you name it. So we are pretty much there when we uh, talk about the uh, security and the uh, compliance. We understand uh, the need of, uh, uh, you know, uh, on, the high, on the security side. Now, let's talk about uh, the legacy testing platforms, right? So that fall short. So when we talk about the legacy testing, using the outdated test management tools, uh, basically, which brings in a uh, lot of, uh, uh, you know, uh, integration, lack of integration, and also managing the test becomes, uh, you know, very, uh, very crucial here. So this will further hamper the uh, efficiency and also further results in the, uh, you know, in, ineffective of test planning and also on the execution side. And when we talk about the automation tools, again, using outdated automations tool can 
further slow down the testing processes, further leading to the delays in identifying and addressing the software issues. So that may further lead to, um, you know, delay in the release time. And uh, when we talk about the unsupported testing frameworks, uh, so without a proper testing frameworks, this can, you know, impair the uh, development and also hinder uh, on the adoption of, uh, you know, the efficient testing practices. And uh, when we talk about the, uh, you know, the browser testing uh, you know, tools incompatible uh, with the limited uh, browser support, there could be a lot of uh, compatibility issues. Uh, we may not be able to understand the issues uh, properly. Right. So this can uh, also uh, these tools will not align uh, with the latest browser standards and the versions. And further, this will lead to inaccurate testing that results in compatibility issues. And when we talk about the uh, real world scenario for the uh, you know testing platforms, all right. So this becomes a very important aspect of uh, testing with real world scenarios. So we will not be able to uh, you know simulate the real world networking conditions, net, uh, real world conditions, be it from the network standpoint or even from the location standpoint. So this will create a lot of uh, uh, struggle uh, to simulate the real world uh, scenarios effectively and uh, also limiting the ability to cast the crucial issues okay and uh, when we talk about the mobile testing capabilities so this is uh, in a very important uh, part of uh, testing right so with the uh, uh, you know limited number of uh, diverse mobile devices it becomes really a challenge to test uh, so you may understand the device fragmentation is so huge and uh, it becomes practically impossible for us to test on every device. So how are we coping up with this challenge? If I am just testing on one or two devices, will that be good enough for me? The answer is no. All right. So we, we need a platform which can help test uh, the applications across wide variety of devices, across different make models, different screen size resolutions. And uh, not just that, even when we talk about on the collaboration side, so this becomes a very important part uh, while we are testing and also developing an application. Uh, in collaboration is something which is very important, which helps in uh, you know teamwork and uh, also uh, you know with the lack of collaboration with improper tools, there could be lack of uh, uh, you know reporting issues and also further uh, you know impairs the uh, teamwork activity. Right. So these are some of the uh, uh, challenges that we see when we are uh, using our legacy uh, platform that fall short. Now, let me uh, uh, quickly introduce a new PCLODI's new unified platform. So PCLODI today stands as the first unified platform in the market, uh, replacing all the fragmented tool chain. So earlier we were all working with different fragmented tool chains in different silos. Now, with the uh, unified platform, we have a comprehensive suite that's combining codeless automation piece, plus test infrastructure, and also test management along with the AI and ML uh, capabilities which are inbuilt in the platform. So this will further empower the agile teams to ship faster. That in turn helps in you know the total cost of ownership and uh, also elevates the user app user experiences for the customer across worldwide. So we will look into detail uh, how unified platform can help. Uh, we will deep dive and understand what are the, its key capabilities. But before that, let me just quickly throw some light on the legacy testing uh, platforms, whatever we were using till now. So this was the legacy testing platforms wherein we had a device infrastructure, uh, either it could be in the form of a, a device farm or it could be um, our own device lab, right? or we have a lim limited number of devices. So working in fragmented tool chain again, and with the uh, different set of automation tools could be on the on the open source end, we talk about open source, it could be an APM and Selenium or some commercial tools. And followed by the some of the dashboards, it could be a framework level dashboard or it could be your own uh, dashboard that you might have created. So all these were uh, independent in nature, right? And they were completely in fragmented tool chain. Now, with the introduction of uh, more legs to our platform, one is the codeless automation generator and the, the other is AMI ML models. So when we talk about codeless automation generator, this is a no code or a low code automation solution uh, wherein which can help you create or automation scripts without having any uh, coding or programming skills. 
so when we talk on the persona side, be it a business analyst or even the SME, right? They will be able to create their automation scripts without uh, having any programming skills as such. So the test creation time becomes very faster. So be it on the mobile side or even on the web APIs and also the desktop. So codeless automation pretty much support across all these uh, different types of applications. So we will look, look, look into detail in our demo how it can help you create your test scripts much faster. Okay. And uh, when we talk about the AI ML model, so, so some of the features are driven through AI. So now we are seeing AI everywhere. AI is actually a buzz, right? So how is AI playing a role in helping uh, the solution uh, cope, uh, cope up with today's needs, right? So there are some features like self-healing uh, when we talk about the maintenance of the test. So how self-healing can help my uh, automation test scripts when, when there is a change, when there's some change in my application, whether if the application, whether if the, the feature is capable enough of handling uh, my changes, and also some uh, few changes around the visual testing parameters, right? So which is very important. So these all these features are driven through uh, AI and ML models. So we will uh, discuss in detail uh, in my demo. Right, so let's uh, quickly jump into the uh, demonstration now. Uh, I'll take you through the product, a live demonstration. So let me just switch the tab, all right? So now let's uh, talk about the new unified platform that's been launched. All right. Uh, so, uh, so if you're a new user, you can quickly do a sign up uh, on our website and uh, just quickly start accessing the platform. Just explore the product. Uh, we have uh, some trail licenses uh, given to all the users. And uh, if you're already an existing user, you can just quickly uh, enter your username and password and then into the platform. So let me uh, sign in and take you through the uh, unified platform. All right, so this is how the platform looks like. So wherein, as I said, so we have all the three different sections. There's a test creation uh, uh, section where we are automating, uh, we are creating the automation scripts, be it for mobile, web, API, or a desktop. And uh, then there's also a test infrastructure where we have both devices and as well as the browsers. So these devices and browsers are hosted uh, across different uh, uh, data centers across different parts of the world. And... Uh, yeah, you can create your scripts and then execute it on the uh, uh, Clody's infrastructure. Followed by the test management. Now, test management is also something which is very important, uh, right? For managing all your projects, your releases, your user stories, your uh, uh, test executions, be it for manual run or automation run, and also logging the defects. So all these are, you know, coupled with, uh, uh, you know, with test management solution. So we will look into detail. So first, let's get started with. Uh, creation uh, standpoint i'll quickly get into the creation and i'll show you how you can create your first automation scripts with a no code or a low code automation solution so as i said it does not require any programming skills or uh, you know understanding the, uh, the coding language uh, any user be it any user be it a business analyst a manual tester or even an sme would be able to create their automation scripts just by recording a, a flow all right, so let's take a look at it. So I'll just quickly create one test, create an automation test. Uh, maybe I can just name this as webinar on Unified. And uh, if you are a manager or maybe if you are a, a project manager and if uh, you, know, you have a team test uh, automation engineers working under you and you want to assign them, you can do that. You can pretty much assign it and also set the priorities accordingly. And there are also options where you can capture the image or even the video, all right? So uh, if you want to instruct your test uh, automation engineers, what is it that you have to record it, right? Or so when you uh, use the capture video, a video recording will get started. You can just simply run through the flow of your application, all right? So this becomes as an evidence, you can add it as an attachment so that it avoids adding, uh, you know, the Excel sheet or even the uh, the documents for them to refer. So very straightforward. Now let me quickly create a test. All right, the test case has been created, and now I can get started with my uh, recording. All right. So uh, so when we talk about no code, low code, this comes with a record and playback feature, wherein you can record the entire uh, user journey. 
and every step gets recorded in simple plain english language and you can further execute this on the uh, real uh, mobile devices or even on the browser side if you are recording a web app so now let's go ahead and uh, record now even uh, before i do that uh, right for example if i am recording a mobile application i have to upload the apk and the ipa files respectively to the cloud drive so how do i do it all right so there is a section called my app data which remains the same earlier we had this um, option where the users can upload it through their local drive so this will help you uh, upload it from your local drive browse it to your local drive and start uploading all your apks and ipa file very straightforward so once you upload your apks and ipa file now you are uh, good to get started for the codeless automation all right now we also uh, there is also one important step needs to be performed at this given point where we are doing a instrumentation of your application for the uh, codeless automation right in order to use so once you upload your app i just have to perform a small action here uh, you know wherein i i just go on this link and just perform the codeless automation wherein this will add all the relevant libraries Uh, for the codeless so basically we are uh, adding some hooks within the app so that that helps in recording right so that's how it takes place so once this is done the application will be renamed with the same name this code codeless automation dot apk all right so now let me go back to my case and do the recording i just go ahead and quickly record it as you can see you can choose the recorder depending on your need whether if you are recording a web app then just the keep it to web Provide the URL and start recording. Or if it, in case it's a mobile application, then you may choose mobile here. And we are also support various different applications like uh, desktop uh, APIs and so on. So these are some of the ERPs uh, on the ERP side. In case if there are any uh, any specific need around ERP, we do also have uh, a separate uh, solution which is called as an opkey, where you can use these different. Uh, recorders to you know uh, to record your ERP applications. For now, let's focus on the mobile piece first. So I'll just use the cloud devices and select the application which we have already uploaded. So let me choose one of the sample. It's this is a grocery application, and now I'll go ahead and select the device on which I need to perform my recording. All right. So this will list all the devices that are available on my cloud. Right. Either I can go filter with manufacturer or just filter with the version. select the device of your choice and start recording so now once you hit the start recording button here the device which we have selected will be booked and the app will get installed on it and we will be getting a bilateral view yeah as you can see so on one side to on the right hand side you see a device with the app being installed all right and on the other side we have a, a, a navigation panel where you The, all the steps will be captured here all right so let's get started with my user journey so all right the app has been installed so let me perform some actions click on maybe later yeah as you may notice the uh, the step has been captured and you may have also noticed that all the attributes and values of this particular object are captured here. so we are going to capture all the attributes and values so which includes various different attributes could be class xpath name id and so on so we will be using this in our automation uh, test scripts all right i'll just continue to accept go to the hamburger in the pantry list maybe i can look for some quick product here maybe i'll just look for apples Uh, just add it. All right, and then go back shopping list. All right, so some small steps that I performed, and then I'll stop the recording and save. Okay, so once I save, all these steps steps will be captured. Uh, and uh, my automation scripts will be ready to be executed right so it's very it's very straightforward uh, very easy so you can just record your automation test scripts in minutes 
right within a couple of minutes uh, i did not even spend much time here so it's very straightforward so depending on your need so now all the steps has been uh, captured what i'll do is i'll just since this got recorded multiple times i'll just remove this okay and now it's very important for me to further do some validations or add assertions right that makes really sense for me to uh, you know test my automation scripts with right and it will have a lot of weightage without validations i think um, there's no point to just recording and then executing it not however you can do that but let me add some assertions to my test right so maybe for example if i have to uh, verify whether you know this particular text is um, no available or not what i'll do is i'll just go here click on add and these are based on keywords all right so there are various uh, different keywords so i can use uh, uh, according to my uh, validation that i want to do say for example in this case i am just using verified text i'll just type the name of the text and i can get it here so it says well, uh, validate whether this particular text so i'll just provide the name of it maybe later okay so this will verify whether maybe later text is available on the screen or not that's one of the simplest uh, uh, validations and then further I'll, i'll try to validate maybe uh, the but the object itself so it might so happen that object itself is changed right so in this case it it becomes uh, very important for me to validate whether if particular object is available or not so let's try and validate whether if accept button is uh, if accept button does exist or not right so i'll just go here uh and then at the step say verify object instead of text i'll use object here and just scroll down so there are various different keywords again uh, so it will all depends on um, how uh, what keyword you are looking for right so so i'll use verify whether object is available or not okay and now we need to provide the object name here correct right? what is that it is looking for so, to know that i need to understand the object hierarchy of this accept button right so we capture the uh, the object repository so i'll just click on accept button here to understand what is the object hierarchy here and just go to change object and this is my object repository so i can look at it here so this is under uh, out of milk main activity and accept okay i'll just close this i just came there to see the object hierarchy and now this do object repository and then i'll just scroll down look for my project and in the second activity it was accepted all right okay now this has been captured all right so validate whether accept object exists or not and further if i want to validate more right if i want to uh, the output of this particular um, uh, validation and then maybe store it in some other variable for that this can be used in my test cases for example if i have to do some if conditions if and end conditions i can do that as well so let's uh, this uh, maybe i can store the value of uh, uh, accept button here let's go here set the out just name it some random value say accept value okay so whatever value the accept returns right whatever value that it returns from this step basically it returns a boolean value could be a true or false so this value would be stored in accept value variable this is my variable now what i'll do is using this output okay try to validate the the below step so i'll just try to put some if conditions so what i'll do is i'll just go here set the if and yeah here i have all right so if condition should end with and so i'll just quickly add end all right so i have both uh, star if and end conditions now let's try to map with the values that i wanted to verify i'll just go here set in data yeah arguments i can uh, validate here just go here data drive so whatever out that i am getting it from the except value i'll just map this okay so this uh, this is mapped i'll go back so in the first argument so this will take the accept value here and then so i am saying if the accept value is equal to 2 yeah then 
to this. Okay. So I'll just quickly copy this code and then go here, just paste it. Okay. Now, so the value of accept button is equal to two. Then this will go and click on accept button and then it will come out. So that's my condition. And uh, yeah, since I've already copied this, I'll just uh, you know run this. So this step will not get run. All right, so that's how you can manage your uh, all the various different conditions and uh, that you wanted to validate. And further, parameterization is also a very important thing, right? So for example, if you have to parameterize some values, so how do you do it? Uh, let me just quickly save this. So there's a section here where you see a data sheet mode. Right? By default, it's set to global data sheet. Let me change it to local. Yeah, and then into the local data sheet, just go ahead and add a, add a specific data sheet here. And yeah, here is given. So automatically, uh, you know, the parameterization are done wherever uh, values, input values that you are providing it, right? So this helps, you know, for me to uh, add uh, other values, right? For example, um, I wanted apples here. Maybe I wanted to add a uh, few more data in my next iteration. I can just go ahead and just change, change it. I can keep on adding. Okay, as long as uh, you know I wanted it, you can just go and then keep on adding it. So that's something which you can very well do. So this, it's automatic parameterization or then you just have to add. So in this case, what this will do is in the first iteration, it will go cap and then it will further go for the next iteration. And then whatever, in case if you want to change the values, you can just change it here. The oranges in this, uh, in this case, and you keep on, you know, you can, so this way you can manage all your uh, test data effectively or uh, if you have your data on your local and you want to add it uh, by someone uh, right you can just import and, and export it you just export this to your local and just fill the data uh, with the uh, parameters whatever uh, that has been highlighted here and get the uh, you know imported exported back to the platform so that is also something which is very much possible i just close this Okay, so this is how you manage your uh, uh, parameterization if, you, if there is any set, various different set of data that you wanted to use. Now, you also have an option uh, or you may also have a condition where you want to set the data automatically. You don't have to provide the data as such, right? You want the platform to generate automatic data, auto generation, right? So then there is an option called auto data generation here. So now this depends again on the various different uh, parameters, what type of parameters that you wanted. So these are some of the defined uh, values. Now you may have certain uh, use case where you want to add, and you can just go ahead here and add it. So for example, I want to add the uh, phone number. Okay, I can just add it and define the length. What is the length of my uh, phone number? And then you can, you may also add certain conditions. Say for example, it should start with 971. Okay and it should contain only numbers all right so this will automatically generate the data right that will start with 971 it should have a length of 10 characters right In, uh, digits basically so, and you will be able to execute it and then there's something called as advanced uh, regular expressions that you can define it uh, something if, if your use case demands you can do that otherwise there are other parameters similar to uh, what we have like email date of birth Page and phone number and so on. All right. So there's something which you can use it. All right. So that's pretty much on the data generation how you can uh, generate it. All right. So once the uh, all the validations, the parameterizations has been done, now you are good to execute the script. All right. So to execute the script, uh, you can simply go ahead and then do the run. Okay. Now before executing the uh, uh, run make sure uh, the agent is running on your uh, local. So agent is required in order to communicate uh, to the server. Since this being a, a cloud-based platform, there's a small agent utility that needs to be configured. So this is my uh, utility, which I have configured and uh, made sure it's up and running. And now you see two different options. Either you run it on a cloud, on cloud device or uh, in case if you want to use your local device, then you can do that. So this is this something which will be uh, released in our upcoming releases. Now I'll go with cloud run and uh, so yeah, select the agent, which is already there by default. I'll go next and now I can, you know, 
provide some name to my test, meaningful name. I'll just keep it as it is. Select the milestone. So as we also manage the test from the test management standpoint, right, where we are providing, uh, where we are creating the releases and the projects, um, right, uh, where we are also having the milestones, you can always associate uh, with your ex execution. So this will help me track uh, my uh, test execution progress. All right, so now further, I can choose any device which I want to run. Uh, just select the device. Yeah, you can also do parallel execution. If say, for example, if I have to do it on multiple devices, I can just go ahead and then I keep on selecting it. So that's something which is very much possible. And further, you can also schedule the run. So if you have a planned schedule run that you wanted to do on a specific date and time, you can do it. Now let's skip this. Other, you also have an options of uh, setting the advanced settings, right? Which includes uh, changing the agent in case if there is any specific need and then also changing the build. And um, so, uh, you know, you can set the conditions. If there is an error on a specific step, what is it that you wanted to perform? Either stop the execution or continue with the error. So by default setting is it will still continue with the error and uh, the execution will complete. Otherwise, if you want to change, if you want to stop the execution, you can just deselect it all. Then further, there are more settings uh, which you can use it. Maybe you can, you can skip the empty data steps. Uh, so also let me highlight the object. All right. Snapshots, uh, what level of snapshots you wanted. Uh, you want the snapshots for every step or just for the failed ones. You can configure it accordingly. You can also choose the snapshot quality and set medium for now. And also set the minimum waiting time even before the step is failing. So there is, so there's a default setting, default time. Where the step actually waits in case if the object is uh, taking time to load, uh, it'll wait for 90 seconds. But however, this is configurable. Uh, you may change it to your need accordingly. If the object is appearing even in one second, the test step will still pass. Right. And further, if you want to uh, get your automation reports or your email, then you can quickly configure the SMTP settings. Uh, that's something which is configurable. Now, let me trigger the run. I'll just start the execution. So once the execution is started, uh, the device which we have selected will be booked and uh, the execution will get started. Yeah, the execution has been queued now. I'll just click on OK. Now I'll just go quickly go to the test run to monitor my execution. Yeah, it's been started. I'll further go ahead and run the test execution. So these are the live logs, live log session. We'll be able to monitor all your logs. Uh, so which includes, um, you know, connecting to the device, setting up the agent and everything. And also it will check for the application and so on. So all that you will be able to monitor here. And I can also view my uh, test execution. I can just get into the uh, uh, live view. So this is something which is required in case you want to monitor your test execution. Yeah, let me go to live view here. So the device will be connected and I'll be able to monitor my uh, live execution here. Yeah, so the execution is pretty much happening here. So side by side, you can monitor your test execution as well. So once the execution is over, the, uh, uh, the execution will get complete and the device will get automatically released. Yeah, the execution has been done. Now, yeah, you may just you may just monitor your live logs. We can just wait for to complete. So once this gets completed, uh, you will be able to see the live view results. Yeah, it's saying the execution is just getting post. So we are pretty much there, and uh, yeah, in no time we should be able to see the results option. Yeah, here is the result. Let me quickly view the results. All right, so that's how the results look like. So I have uh, all the steps, right, along with the status of every step, whether if it's passed or failed, and also the time taken to perform every step, right? Basically, uh, uh, you know, the, at every action, what is the time that has been taken here? So all that has been monitored along with the screenshot. Okay, so so since we very uh, since we had an option of uh, you know selecting all snapshot for every steps. So you can monitor this in real time. Yeah, this is how it looks like. And uh, some few validations which we did, whether the text is available or not. Yeah, the output is true. Further, we validated the uh, accept button. Yeah, and then few conditions. These are where our input parameters and then the output value. Yeah, 
and then snapshots again. So that's how uh, the report looks like. And these reports are further uh, export. You can export the reports and you can also download the logs in case if you need to understand the uh, logs. Uh, if there are any specific issues, then you can download it. Otherwise, you can download the report. So the report can be in a uh, different format. Right now, it's PDF or Excel. And uh, yeah, you can also choose to have a logo uh, of your choice, uh, default project or any custom. Include snapshots in case if you want it. Put the directory path and then just export it. Just for the benefit of time, I've already uh, downloaded one. So this is how the report looks like, okay? wherein you have uh, detailed uh, you know, execution status, suit name, session started, completion, total number of test cases passed, failed, right? All that in uh, you know your real format. Plus, in detail, all the uh, steps. So the test engineer would be very much interested in understanding all the. Uh, test steps whether they have been executed and and also the result right along with the uh, status of the test, all the validations plus we are also providing with the snapshot even uh, so if you click on the snapshot the snapshot gets open so which can help uh, further understand if there are any specific issues right so this report is uh, pretty much uh, straightforward so once this is done you are good with the execution right and you can go ahead and share your results so that's pretty much on the uh, on the uh, mobile automation side. Now, when we talk about the web automation, so this also pretty much remains the same. So we ha I have recorded one scenario uh, for a for one of our uh, banking uh, you know application, right? So wherein the recording remains very much the same. Choose the recorder and uh, just keep it to web. Provide the URL and then start recording, and uh, you will perform all the user journey and all the steps will get captured here all right so for the benefit of the time i've already created one wherein i'm launching one app uh, getting into the credit card section and then applying to uh, you know applying for a card and then this also requires some information that i need to provide like first name last name email address followed by the phone number so what i have done is instead of providing it manually i'm getting the I'm calling some API calls, right? I can also do a API testing, as I said, so you can create your API test. So I have created this as a component, right? So this is called as a reusable component, right? So instead of uh, recording it in one single flow, I what I have done is a specific components I have recorded separately so that I can use it anywhere in any of my test cases. So this is something which helps in reusability of your uh, automation test scripts, right? So it has few steps like, uh, you know, getting the user information from the server and which is in the form of JSON and I'm then using all this information in my next step. So the output of these APIs, I'm using it in my uh, you know, test cases like first name, last name and so on. And then further, I'm validating with all the negative and positive scenarios that I wanted it. Very straightforward. And uh, further, I mentioned about reusable components uh, right so reusable components are uh, uh, again plays a crucial role here right so which helps me uh, you know use it use the uh, component anywhere across my different uh, uh, projects right across different test cases i don't have to record the entire uh, flow in one stretch like mm, the login and logout could be common across all my test cases so instead of recording it single flow what i'll do is i'll just record them in two separate uh, sections right so, so if I just show you one component here, which is a login where I have separately recorded, where I've launched the app, uh, set the username and password, and then signing in. All right. So this particular component becomes a reusable component for me. I can call it any time, anywhere. Uh, so that makes my uh, life easier when it comes to creating the automation test scripts. All right. And further, uh, not just the API, but also if there are any uh, database uh, that you want to perform, right? you want to connect to a, a specific database, uh, say MySQL or any other thing, you can do that. So again, this is through key one. You can, again, this I have created as a specific component called as reusable, where I'm connecting to my MySQL and then I can just provide my uh, the IP address, then I'm executing a query. So all that can be incorporated within your test cases, right? So I'm calling API component. I'm also calling the database component if I have to do it. And not just that. So if there are uh, uh, scenarios wherein 
you are switching from web to mobile or mobile to web by other way other way around so you can pretty much do that so that's something which is automatically been handled you don't have to uh, you know put more efforts or add some conditions there so that's been automatically taken care all right so that's something uh, uh, which you can manage now let me quickly run and uh, show you one uh, scenario uh, right on the website yeah uh, so let me just go ahead and run this run browser yeah i can choose the cloud run and uh, yeah i can yeah i have options of running it on either on windows and mac so as i said so from the test infrastructure standpoint we are providing both devices as well as the browsers so i can choose the device which i wanted yeah say for example on the windows 10 let's choose 121 and uh, yeah all that settings for the settings i can do it yep the execution has been started now i can go to the browser in the my active session i should be able to uh, view the live just like mobile so when the execution will happen here so i should be able to get my live execution here so before that what i'll do is i'll just quickly go to manage and uh, yeah even in the test you will be able to man uh, see your test uh, execution status yeah the browser has been moved and further i'll just quickly connect So this is the cloud instance uh, where we have uh, connected to a Windows 10 machine with a Chrome 121 browser, all right? So you will be able to execute all your test automation scripts on multiple uh, platforms, right? Be it on uh, multiple OSs rather, Windows 10, Windows 11, or even on the Mac machines. Uh, so that's something which is uh, very straightforward. So uh, the communication has been started. Uh, we saw some logs and uh, anytime the execution will get started. So that's more uh, from the uh, web automation side. Yeah, here you can see the, uh, the automation execution has been kick-started. So this has been controlled through an automation software here, as you can see here. Yeah, the banking application into the credit card section where the user is going to apply for a credit card. Yeah, and yeah, you might have seen that it, it, you know, it got switched to a different tab. So this is also taken care automatically. Yeah. Uh, further, we'll do some validations around uh, all these. And I'm also calling an API call through which I'm getting this data, right? So API call has been called. I'm using all these data. I'm just canceling it. Yeah, so that's how the execution looks like, okay? So once the execution is completed, similarly, uh, the machine will get automatically released and you should be able to see your test execution report. It's uh, still getting executed. Once it's done, you'll be able to see the report. Let me show you the other reports, which you've already run. Yeah, this is executed. So there were some uh, validations that it has failed here because this we are running uh, what we are running is uh, we are running it on uh, negative scenarios, right? So all the steps has been captured along with the screenshots, API calls, whatever API calls that we have made, all that is pretty much there. Yeah, this is the output response of my API, which I'm calling it. Uh, I'm using the data here, the username, the email address, all that in my, you know, next following steps. If conditions, invalid, uh, email address so this was a negative scenario which we were using where we entered the incorrect email address right it said false and the output is false that's that's where the uh, uh, the step failed we may also the screenshot corresponding screenshot to it all right so that's how the uh, uh, the execution looks like for a web automation all right that's pretty much it on the uh, uh, test creation standpoint and also the test execution, which we have seen. Now, I'll quickly show you how the uh, infrastructure looks like, right? So you may have a situation where you want to uh, connect to a device, do some manual testing. Not everything can be automated, right? You still need uh, uh, devices uh, where you can perform the manual test of your application. So you can just get into our infrastructure, go to the devices section, yeah? So these are the uh, devices uh, that are hosted across different locations in India, US, Singapore, and so on. You have filter conditions where you can set 
with uh, different OSs, different uh, OEMs, different screen sizes. We not only support smartphones, but also tablets and tablets, different network carriers. If you're looking to test your application on uh, different uh, network phones, you can pretty much choose it. Different locations, yeah. You may very well choose all the various different locations here. And connecting the device is very straightforward. Again, uh, you just have to look for the availability of the device. And, and since this being a public cloud, you can see some devices in this state. Yeah, uh, that's how the public cloud is designed. So now let me acquire a device quickly. So once the device is acquired, I can you know quickly do my uh, functional testing from the manual testing standpoint. So there are various different features on the left as well as on the right. I can you know go on and just install the app if my application is in the production. Uh, uh, I know I can just go to the Play Store app store, download the app, or if it is in the form of APKs and IPA. You can upload it to Cloud Drive and you can start upload it, start installing it. We do have integration with App Center. Uh, for instance, if you are uh, having uh, distributing a app through App Center, you can simply integrate it by providing your App Center token and you can install it directly. So for now, let me uh, quickly install any uh, any applications which I already have it. Install. And I can monitor the logs. So these are uh, device logs, uh, basically, if you have to understand. If I have to, and uh, if there is any uh, crash that happens, I can monitor them. Analysis this is more from performance metric standpoint, where we capture the CPU memory battery consumption of my application. This helps me. Uh, well, uh, this helps me understand if there are any performance bottlenecks. Uh, very much uh, live data. Uh, we are also capturing this in the report section. Further, uh, there are some features uh, which are self-explanatory, and uh, there are some features here where you can actually simulate. So if you want to simulate the networking conditions, there are various different profiles that are created like 3G, 4G, G, 5G, and so on. So all these can be used with different uh, profiles uh, at any given point. You can use it. We mock the location through GPS. So this is through GPS. If you if your application is a location specific, you can you can pretty much use it. And uh, yeah, any biometrics authentication needs to be done. Uh, then we have a simulation again where you can. Uh, by the indication process. So again, this requires a small instrumentation where the app gets uh, instrumented uh, with our uh, feature. And you may have two different conditions wherein you can pass or fail. And uh, yeah, also image injection. So this is something if you want to scan the QR code or the barcodes or any, um, you know, any document that needs to be scanned, you can actually upload it to the drive and then you can inject it during the runtime once the camera is triggered. Right. So these are some of the uh, features on the manual functional testing side. Yeah. Once you're done with your test, you may release it and you can either go back or view the report. So we do provide a comprehensive report even for manual testing, uh, which gives you a quick holistic view about your uh, functional testing. So this will help you understand all the key parameters, uh, all the performance metrics like CPU, memory, battery consumption, and plus uh, the video, the session video will also get recorded along with the logs. This becomes very important uh, for you to analyze in the later stages or if you wish to share it among your team members, you can uh, pretty much do that as well. So this is my report and this is how my report looks like. Yeah, wherein we are capturing all the uh, parameters here. Yeah, this includes session details, uh, the device details on which we perform the test followed by all the performance parameters like battery chart, memory, CPU, and also the snapshots in case if you are capturing along with the logs and video. So the entire session has been recorded in the form of video. And these reports are shareable. A copy report link, which helps you uh, share the link among your different users or different stakeholders. All right, so that's more on the uh, functional testing side on the device side. And we do also have browsers, uh, real uh, browsers, wherein we have I don't know, across different OSs uh, different varieties of uh, browsers yeah, for both Windows and Mac. Uh, you can pretty much have a look at it. Yeah. Uh, again, acquiring is very straightforward. Depending on the availability, you can come here and then connect, and uh, and I can just uh, use it. So the test infrastructure can also be used uh, along among along with your uh, APM or Selenium-based scripts. If you already created your APM and Selenium-based script, you may use it and integrate it with our platform and then execute it. So that option is also uh, pretty much there. Now, lastly, uh, we'll quickly get into the test management piece, uh, which is very important again. 
uh, where we can manage all the different project releases, uh, the milestones, the user stories, and so on. So let's quickly have a look at it. I have created a few uh, releases. Uh, creating releases is very straightforward. Uh, so let me use the one which I've already created. And uh, yeah, and I have associated my release with milestone here. You can create milestone. You can define all your, uh, you know, the different parameters. So, uh, you know, on the plan, start date, end date, all that, you know, we can pretty much validate. So this is my milestone and which I can further think my respective user stories, the test cases, and also any defects that have been locked to it. So this helps me uh, quickly uh, you know, monitor my uh, release and also the milestone, whether if I'm, you know, par with the uh, end results. Yeah, so I'm linking this with the user stories followed by tickets and also the uh, test cases. So that's how something which is you can very much manage. And uh, not just that, I mentioned about user stories and also tickets, right? So user stories can also be created here. If you've already created your existing uh, user story, you can go ahead and, uh, you know, if you want to create it from the scratch, you can go ahead and create it. Otherwise, if you already created through your Jira or Excel, so we have integration with uh, uh, Jira and also uh, Excel. So it requires you to quickly perform an uh, uh, integration here, wherein you can sync the data uh, of your test execution status, or you know even uh, be it from the user stories standpoint. If you want to import it, you can very well do it either from Jira or even from Excel. So these are some of my user stories that we have created it. And then lastly, uh, tickets. So if if there are any defects that needs to be logged, you can log a ticket here, either through a ticket a ticket option, or you can further import it from uh, Jira or Excel, yeah. To get creating again it gives you all the options like putting the summary, test, webinar, defect type. You can select the defect type. What type of uh, defect it is? Set the priorities. Sign assign to the user. Set the milestone. Set the image or video in case if you want to add better description here, and then create it. So the defect is created. Yeah. Now you can link it to uh, your user stories or, you know, even you can link it to your test case. Other in case, if you want to link it to your Jira instance, you can pretty much do that as well. Okay, so that's more about the uh, tickets. And lastly, the dashboard. Right? The dashboard is very important for all the project managers and the test managers for them to quickly have a holistic view about your uh, uh, projects or releases and also the milestones that were set. Right. So this gives them a quick overview. Um, both the status of their test execution, uh, gets raised by priorities, uh, cases by suit in case if you are executing this as a part of suit. So you can create a suit and then add multiple test cases to it and you can run it. Test cases and components, different test cases and components you can see. Uh, we have about 30 test cases and then six components. Gets by status, all that. So you can further configure it in case if you want to configure the dashboard uh, according to your need. All right, so that's pretty much on the uh, dashboard side. So we have pretty much covered on all the three important uh, sections of it, uh, mostly on the test creation, test infra, and also on the test management part. Now, uh, on the AI and ML piece, right? So this is something which, um, you know, I, I'll quickly uh, run through, talk not much time here, maybe a minute or so. In order to manage my... Uh, test cases, right? So if I have a new build altogether and if there are any changes, so should I worry about my changes? The answer is no. You don't have to worry about the changes. It's been automatically taken care of it. So if there is any change in the object uh, uh, properties, uh, so self-healing is something which is uh, powered by AI, uh, which is intelligent enough to understand if there are any changes, either could be an ID, XPath or name or a text. So it'll identify and it'll give you the, uh, you know, it'll identify and uh, and it'll use the best next best uh, option, right? So for example, I have an accept button here. Uh, yeah, so if I look at it, these are the object properties. So we capture all the object and properties of a particular object, right? Which includes all the class, XPath, name and so on. And these are the predefined ones, which has been used. Now, if your class or XPath gets yeah. changed, right? if any of these gets yeah. changed, so the, uh, the feature or the platform is intelligent enough to understand that there is a change in the uh, in my class and uh, this will use the next best uh, option could be an xpath or a name or even on the text set and your scripts will automatically pass 
so this helps in uh, you know from the test maintenance standpoint the test maintenance will drastically reduce and thereby helping in your test productivity all right so that's something on the uh, self healing feature and so when we talk about the visual testing right so it's also very important to understand from the visual testing standpoint uh, if there are any visual uh, changes in my app right there, there could be change in the text or there could be uh, you know change in the color of a button or the logo itself is uh, completely missing or changes in the uh, logo right how are we uh, uh, you know validating these changes again this is driven through uh, keywords you can always add uh, keywords here just go for it search for the keyword say compare image so this will give me different uh, uh, images so i can just use these images then provide the input here so i just need to provide uh, the path of my first image and then the second path so what it does is it will compare it'll do the comparison between two different images so basically it's a pixel to pixel comparison what it does and it will quickly spontaneously it will quickly instantly identify the images changes any any changes if there are and uh, yeah and uh, and the the results will be uh, pretty much there you will have a differential image which will quickly highlight so this will help you spot if there are any visual changes in your application all right so this is more on the ai side of things and there are a lot many features around ai uh, we i don't have time much time to cover but yeah if i just quickly have to uh, brief you about that so there are some features which are driven through bot one is called as a bot testing uh where in you know you can do a quick sanity do a quick sanity test of your application even before you release your app so there are two different types of bot which automatically takes care of it you just have to upload your app rest the bot takes care of it the the bot takes care of it right uh and it gives you holistic uh, uh, results uh while performing test on 10 different random devices right? so that's more around uh, bot testing and then there is also one more ai driven feature which is called as a sync test right so now what is synthesis synthesis is basically a uh, manual parallel testing right manual parallel testing you might have heard about automation parallel but what is this manual so you can actually connect to different devices uh, two different devices at the same time and then uh, you know whatever actions that you're performing on the primary device the secondary device will just try to follow this is more on the manual parallel testing so we can have some more in detail uh, discussion about these different uh, features maybe in my next webinar so we are pretty much there on time so we just have two minutes left maybe i'll just quickly answer the questions if there are any so that's uh, pretty much it yeah, over to the many any sure fun <clears throat> fantastic demo shoeb a uh, great presentation uh, thanks for helping us with this walk through i'm confident that our testers are definitely going to love this platform uh, they know they do they no longer need to uh, actually use multiple tools now right Uh, for the testing activities like and eventually the uh, this will save a lot of time and money for them so now as we transition to the qa session uh, yes we are uh, we are short on time already but see i see questions are lining up uh, so i see pranav from think ai is asking if there is a free trial available and how can we access uh, i'll take that so you can take a breather for a while So yeah, uh, Pranav. Yes, there is a free trial available. You just have to visit www.pcloudy.com. I'll share you the link. Uh, just log in. Uh, you sign up, log in, and you'll get 14 days of free trial uh, there, and you can try it out. And if you if you have any questions, uh, our support team will be there to you know guide you 24/7. Uh, okay. Yes. Then uh, Balaji from Capji uh, is asking, can you help us understand the licensing of the tool, test creation, device infra? Uh, is project management tool comes inclusive in the pricing? Uh, okay. Yeah. This one also I can take. So yes, uh, Balaji. Uh, so to know more about the pricing, you can definitely visit our website and see the pricing. Uh, you will see all these three categories. They are uh, you know licensing separately. so if you wish you can just go for test creation part uh, but we would suggest you go with the test creation plus device infra in combo uh, so that would definitely help you in your you know project management and this project management tool this comes inclusive with any of the you know licenses that we have be, be it test creation side or be it test device infra side so we are totally flexible here i hope that answers your questions uh, then Uh, Jasmine from Convo dot uh, AI is asking, "How user friendly is the platform, and do you have any tips for someone new to using this tool? Uh, also, how long is this free trial?" 
Uh, Shweb, would you like to take this about user friendliness and how they can learn about this platform? All right. Uh, very good question. Um, uh, so the when we talk about uh, the uh, user friendliness of the platform, how easy it is to learn and uh, what does it take for you to, you know, get started with your first automation script? So when we talk about the learning curve, I'll say the learning curve is pretty much zero here. It does not require any learning at all. You just need to understand the uh, some of the keywords, uh, right? So which can, uh, you know, uh, which can later on, when you can pick it up as and when you are recording it. So since it comes up with a record and playback, right? That's where it we have termed it as a no code or low code. Any persona would be able to create their automation scripts without having any programming skills. So you don't have to worry about, uh, you know, the learning uh, from the platform standpoint. It is very, very, very minimal. Uh, so you might just record it once and then when you're trying to record it for the second and third time you can see yourself you'll see a lot of difference in it and uh, and so also on the uh, execution part so anyone can record and then also execute it for adding the validations and assertions i can this require some sort of uh, uh, you know understanding about your scenarios uh, whether if you're validating whether if it's a positive test case or negative test case based on this knowledge i think you should be able to pick it up i think uh, even the objects the keywords are very straightforward it's simple in plain english language so anyone uh, with a fair knowledge about testing should be able to uh, you know uh, get started with their functional test and this will drastically reduce your test creation time by 80 percent right than the the other uh, open source or uh, some of the commercial tools that we have so that's the benefit of uh, having a no code or low code automation solution Hope that answers your question. Yeah, all right. So there is this uh, anonymous question. Uh, is QLM completely replacing our in-house Jira setup for testers? All right. Uh, I mean, good question. I mean, not really. Um, uh, we uh, do have the capabilities of uh, um, uh, Jira where we are managing here uh, by you know managing the releases, the projects, the milestones. Uh, the test runs bit manual or automation and also the uh, the tickets. So it's more or less pretty much the same what Zira does it, right? However, if you're still using Zira, yeah, as I uh, mentioned during my demonstration, we have seamless integration with Zira as well. And you can actually sync the data to your Zira instance. So yeah, any execution status you want to link it to your Zira instance, this is automated. This is taken care when you uh, sync the data, be it for uh, test execution status, a bit for passed or failed, or even even if you just have to set the notifications or log your ticket. So this is something which can uh, you know manage. Even if you don't have Zira, it is uh, a very good uh, you know point for you to get started with the QLM. So that gives you all the uh, features and functionalities that at any test management tools uh, to have. But if you are already using, then you can go ahead and then use your own, use the uh, uh, Jira along with the QLM. Yeah, all right. Just to add to that, we have like 50 plus integrations across categories. So that would definitely uh, help you in your day to day uh, testing uh, uh, journey, right? Absolutely. All right. So uh, thanks all. Uh, it's, uh, it's it's time to wrap up. Uh, thanks for joining us. Uh, it was a really great discussion. Uh, we hope you found Ashweb's demo enlightening. Uh, if you have any questions, any further clarification, uh, don't hesitate to contact us. You can visit our website and uh, submit your questions uh, from contact us pages. Uh, also, I request you to keep an eye on the follow-up, including uh, the rec recording of today's session and uh, some additional resources to support your uh, exploration of our platform. So your time and participation meant a lot for us. Uh, wishing you a wonderful day ahead. Thank you so much. Thank you so much, everyone. Have a great day ahead.